When I was a new teacher, I thought all you had to do was tell people that this is the slope intercept form and this is the slope M and this is the B and it makes life easier and let's learn how to graph and go from there. Since then, I've learned that it's really not super obvious. Let me show you how it works and then I'll back up and show you why it's awesome and how it's a huge shortcut for us when we are graphing. Let's go back to something you're familiar with, an XY table. I'm going to pick numbers, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Nothing magical here. I picked those. The Ys are going to come from the answers we get when we put these Xs in here. So negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. Do the math in your head with me. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. 0. Oh, that's easy. 0 times 2 is 0 plus 1 is 1. 1. 2 times 1 is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, and 2, 2 times 2 is 4, and 4 plus 1 is 5. Now, I have another video where we talked about what slope means. I'll link it up here in the corner, but there's a formula we use to assign a number to a line to talk about how steep it is. Slope is the change in y over the change in x. So let's figure out what that is. For this equation, we find the change in y first. How do you go from negative 1 to 1? You have to add 2. To go from 1 to 3, you add 2, and to go from 3 to 5, you add 2. Our change in y is 2, positive 2. Find the change in x. Now, I picked these numbers on purpose to go up by 1s. That just makes this part easier. So 1. So our slope of the line is 2. Where does the 2 show up in this equation? It's right here. Let's check the graph. We want to find the y-intercept. I'll explain that in a second when you can see it. Negative 1, negative 1. That point is right here. 0, 1 is right there. By the way, that's the y-intercept if you are with me. 1 and 3. And 2 and 5. That's this point. Graph the line. The question is, where does that line cross the y-axis? That's called your y-intercept. It's right here. That's the y-intercept. The value of that number is plus 1. And plus 1 shows up in your equation here. So what you've got, for this one anyway, is that the slope is in front of the x and the constant is this y-intercept number. Is that going to work all the time? Of course it will, but let me prove it to you. Here's a new equation, y equals negative 3x minus 1. I'm going to use the same x's because why not? Negative 1 times negative 3 is a positive 3. Positive 3 minus 1 is 2. 0 makes this easy. It zeroes this out. Your answer is negative 1. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. Negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. And 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. And subtract 1 from that, you get a 7. Let's ca calculate the slope for this one. The change in y is going to be negative 3. To get from 2 to negative 1, you have to subtract 3. To go from negative 1 to negative 4, you have to subtract 3. And negative 4 to negative 7, you subtract 3. So our change in y is going down 3 units. Our change in x is still going to be a positive 1. That means our slope is negative 3. And the negative 3 is in the equation right here. To find that y-intercept, if you haven't picked it up out of the table yet, and I know some of you have and you're screaming at me to go faster, it's right there. You guys, people learn that over time. Right now I'm just doing the basics. The y-intercept is where the line is going to cross the y-axis. That's what I want to focus on. Negative 1 and 2 is right here. 0, negative 1 is down here, 1, negative 4 here, and then 2, negative 7 goes off the graph, but not by much. I'm going to estimate it right there. In a little bit, I'll show you how to do that when it goes way off the graph. Let's draw the line. Where does it cross the y-axis? Right there. That's the visual. That is your y-intercept. And where does that negative 1 show up in the equation? Right there. Once again, y equals mx plus b holds. Now this plus with the plus b doesn't have to do with the formula. It has to do with the, the sign of the number. So this is negative 1, so this would be b is a negative 1. This is plus a negative 1. All right, that is why it works. Now let's make a shortcut out of it. 
how can I graph without having to make a table of values, just knowing what I know? Y equals mx plus b. The b is the y-intercept, and the y-intercept here is plus 2. So put a point on that. You have to start there. I mean, the slope is awesome. But if you don't know where to start, you don't know where to count up from, you got to have a starting point, and that's going to be your y-intercept. Now your slope is 3, which is 3 over 1, which means I'm going to go from the starting point. I'm going to go up 3 boxes over 1 box and put another point. 2 points, I can draw a line. Boom, I'm done. If I didn't have to explain that, you guys would be done with that in like, what, 10 seconds? Way faster than using a table of values. Let's try it again with a different equation. Negative 3x plus 4. Your y-intercept is up here on the 4. Your slope is negative 3 over 1. Negative 3 over 1 means you are going to drop 3 and go over 1 and put another point there. Draw the line. This is a negative slope. It's going downhill. That is the equation of the line. y equals negative 3x plus 4. Okay, we got to go over a couple things that are going to pop up that make this seem harder than it really is. Right now you're like, oh, this is easy. Yeah, and then watch what happens here. Plus 2 is our y-intercept. Plot that first. Your slope is 7 fourths. This means you're supposed to go up 7 over 4. Okay, one, two, three, four, and I am fully not off the graph, but completely off the screen. You're not going to be able to see where that point's going to be. So you have to know how to graph backwards. So instead of going up seven over four, I want you to go down seven and back up four. So down seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then over four, one, two, three, four, and your point should be right here. Now you're down the line. Now this is a positive slope. Because we graphed that last point backwards, it got into the right spot. If you had done it wrong, you would have been over here in quadrant four, and when you drew the line, it would have been a negative slope, and you want to have a positive slope. That's how you get these to fit on a graph. Let's try another one. This one's got a couple things that could throw you off. It seems real simple, right? Y equals negative one half X. But then you go to do your Y intercept and there's nothing there. Well, that means you're adding zero. So your Y intercept is zero. So put your point on the origin, put it right there at zero, zero. Now your slope, negative one half, when they print negative fractions, they always put the negative sign in the front. For graphing, what I'd like you to do is move that negative up to the numerator. Your change in slope is down one, and you'll go over two in the positive direction. Down one, over two, and put a point there. Draw the line, and you are done. This shortcut with the y equals mx plus b works great most of the time, but there are some exceptions, and you need to know about how to graph horizontal and vertical lines too, which will work a little bit differently. Click into this video, and I'll show you how to do that. Hey, don't forget to like the video before you leave. It helps me grow on YouTube. Thanks, guys. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.